It's an honor for me to address you on everything water in the context of cultural heritage, climate, sustainable development, and a better future. The past is not a recipe for the future. 99% of all our investments are increasing climate change and are increasing our vulnerability. Only in 1% can we find salvation or inspiration for better future solution. Learning from the past takes a different aspect than only looking back. It really means positioning the past in the current and future challenges. And replicating the past uh, will not bring a better future. We have to move away, shy away from non-responsive, even reactive approaches where we're in the midst of vested interests, eh? a replication of mistakes that drives every step. No, we have to become radically proactive and inclusive, comprehensive and sustainably, and really look at the future. But the future, the scenarios, eh? the uncertainties and how that works should inform our decision making too. So it's this tension between past and future that gives us a clear pathway where we have to go. The recommendation on the historic urban landscape is first and foremost a way of understanding um, built heritage as a landscape. It's a landscape approach to identifying, conserving and managing heritage. It looks at heritage as the outcome or the result of the interactions between the built, the natural and the local community. So these three elements become very key. The protection of, of heritage uh, in this sense has to be done at many different levels from planning to the management of people and practices to enable them to continue to make the place meaningful. Protection of uh, historic uh, cities, in general, the protection of, of uh, uh, man-made uh, environments where you have this uh, very fragile type of uh, equilibrium is, uh, is a very difficult question. It's a question that we can, I think, only look through uh, via a more, a more uh, general uh, perspective. Where it comes to the whole approach, it's very much about uh, how can you combine things and how can you uh, look holistic uh, to uh, these uh, issues? How can you position heritage uh, into other current and urgent uh, needs and challenges? We can learn from historic places and communities to rethink how we live with water today. We need to protect and, where necessary, adapt our heritage sites so that they can inspire future generations. Our lost water systems, tangible and intangible, can inspire new, sustainable practices. Therefore, let's take a closer look at the current challenges of water in historic port cities. The spatial form of these cities is often closely connected to water challenges. Their socio-economic structures derive from global trade and development, as did their policies, cultures, narratives, laws and ways of doing things. To live more sustainably, we should rethink how to value water and heritage. Amsterdam and the Netherlands Venice in Italy and St. Louis in Senegal are UNESCO World Heritage Cities. Conversations with professionals from the cities reveal challenges and opportunities for connecting water and heritage 
in ways that aid sustainable development. Amsterdam is a key example of a water-related heritage site and an active port city. The city's water-derived attractiveness also comes with challenges. The subsoil is unstable, leading to the collapse of several of the historic key walls. Amsterdam is located two meters below sea level. To preserve the historic site, it requires new approaches. The Amsterdam Grachten system is a nice example of a very historic system which still is part of the current water management system of the whole region uh, around Amsterdam. And there are structures in it which were constructed in the 15th century and which are still an essential part of uh, the, the water management system. All these different elements, the 20th century elements, the 19th century elements, and the elements of the 15th, 16th, 17th century, they still are working together. And that we build upon our own history, that is, I think, very important to, uh, to be aware of and to show. Venice in Italy is a world famous port city and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. For centuries, the Venetians had to deal with the tides of the Adriatic Sea. Floods always threatened the slowly sinking historic city. If we want to save Venice, and I think we should save Venice, we, we need to save the planet. We need to save the planet because uh, we need, first of all, that climate change uh, should not go beyond a certain certain consequences. So we need uh, um, to do what is possible uh, to mitigate climate change. And if we take uh, the history of, of Venice, uh, you can understand that the, the approach, the attitude uh, of the Venice uh, Republic uh, was, uh, as, was very clear. And it was not against working against the lagoon, but it was working with the lagoon. And um, getting the lagoon to a kind of stable uh, condition, which nevertheless extremely dynamic. So this dynamic uh, balance is a little bit of the probably what we have lost. We have lost because uh, we, we we want to to stabilize in a more rigid way things in order to be sure that the protection, for example, can be always uh, uh, there and and possible. So I think what we should recover is not a specific uh, maybe type of, uh, of uh, infrastructure, but a more this attitude that is not looking for the final solution, but is only looking for provisional experimental uh, conditions in, in that you where you can test this uh, uh, dynamic type of uh, equilibrium. The island of St. Louis in Senegal is uniquely challenged by water issues. Located on an island at the mouth of the Senegal River, it faces the Atlantic Ocean and has been a hub of shipping for some 300 years. The challenge of a rising sea level is particularly urgent in St. Louis. Aucun projet ne devrait se faire aujourd'hui à saint louis sans tenir compte de ce phénomène de l'eau. Aussi bien pour le fleuve, les deux plans de fleuve, la morsure, que l'océan Atlantique. À mon avis, c'est une question importante pour que Saint-Louis soit préservé patrimoine mondial, mais que Saint-Louis soit préservé pour les communautés, parce que euh, même si Saint-Louis est site du patrimoine mondial, Saint-Louis n'est pas une île déserte. C'est une île habitée. C'est des communautés qui sont là, c'est une île vivante. On ne le fait pas pour l'UNESCO, on le fait pour nous-mêmes, on le fait pour les communautés qui sont là. On a mis beaucoup, beaucoup d'argent sur le, le site, mais sans, vraiment euh, sans, 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 sans avoir les, les résultats escomptés. Et aujourd'hui, ce qu'on constate, c'est qu'il y a vraiment un, un hiatus entre l'importance des fonds dégagés, investis, et la faiblesse des résultats. Comme on dit, on n'arrête pas la, la mer avec ses bras. Mais c'est une question qu'il faut voir globalement et trouver des solutions 
euh, si vous voulez, applicable à, à l'échelle internationale, avec une coopération internationale importante, avec un changement, euh, si vous voulez, de, 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 de bonnes pratiques, euh, que les experts, si vous voulez, des pays, de, 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 comme des pays qui vivent avec l'eau, des pays insulaires comme le Japon, comme les autres pays insulaires qui ont une technologie avancée, puissent quand même travailler avec des pays comme les pays en développement, comme en Afrique, en Amérique latine, etc., pour aider un peu avec une coopération internationale à trouver des solutions communes pour lutter contre les changements climatiques et sauvegarder ces villes d'eau, ces villes du patrimoine mondial qui sont liées à l'eau, qui sont des villes côtières, bien des villes insulaires. Et pour moi, donc, le futur, c'est un peu dans cette vision inclusive, globale, dans cette vision vraiment holistique du développement, qu'il faut voir euh, la survie de ces villes comme Saint-Louis. There is more, more and more uh, understanding that uh, uh, economic uh, values uh, cannot save us. No? So I think uh, if, we, if we start from this perspective, um, there is only one way to get out of, the, of this situation, that is to open to other values. So from this perspective, to give value to the water, to, to give value to, the, to water cities, to water cultures, uh, will be a way also to, uh, to save the planet. If we want to look ahead, it better be comprehensive, long-term. Matching long-term comprehensive planning with short-term innovative approaches. In this mix between long-term and short-term, it is about partnerships, collaborations and coalition, inclusion of all, and at the same time in a very transparent and accountable way. That is how you build capacity. Capacity that is institutional, that is individual, that even is informed. I set up a program in Asia called Water as Leverage, a program that really uses the multitude of water's capacity across the SDGs in a process that is innovative. It is creating space, time and room, safe space or soft space, to ensure that there is the capacity to innovate, to invest in each other and build coalitions. I can conclude uh, in our cities and by looking and learning from the past for a better future. Thank you very much. <laughs>